The thing I enjoy most about bird watching is spending time um, in the quiet, in the woods, and um, in nature, and just taking the time to really listen and be still, and that it it makes me slow down because that's not something that comes naturally to me. birding in I think the 1990s but I've been doing it more seriously since probably the mid 2000s. I've been birding I don't know I would say at least 20 years. I've been birding my whole life. Um, I consider myself kind of more of like a backyard birder. I do not consider myself a birder. I've been watching birds my whole life. Southwest Michigan Land Conservancy's nature preserves are amazing places to explore and enjoy nature. Everyone is welcome there. But did you know that these preserves also provide critical habitat for birds? From familiar backyard birds like northern cardinals and downy woodpeckers to rare and declining species like the bobolink and trumpeter swan, these nature preserves provide the food, shelter, nesting habitat, and migratory pit stops that so many bird species need to survive. So I have a conversion moment when I went from non-birder to birder and that was at our family property. I was birding with a group just kind of along for the ride and uh, I didn't know what it was at the time but this beautiful yellow warbler with a black hood flew right in, super visible. I got a great look at it and I couldn't believe it. I didn't know there were such things as birds that beautiful in Michigan. So the hooded warbler was my conversion bird. My most memorable birding experience is the first time I saw a rose-breasted grosbeak. I just think that that's a color that doesn't occur in nature that much. And it's also for beginners, sometimes those um, birds that are really easy to identify with those great field yeah, marks. This so, goes back to when um, I was a teenager. I mean, just knock my socks off. My neighbor says, hey, there's a hummingbird in the backyard on these. And I'd never seen a hummingbird before. So the first time that I saw a hummingbird, it's like a blur just darting around the flowers. It was just amazing. So. Yeah, well I think, I mean, I guess I can go back to sort of my, my, I, my favorite bird I had said was the goldfinch. And I think that's because that was sort of the most exciting bird at my grandma's house. Um, and so anytime you see it, I was a little kid and I'd just be like, oh, it's a goldfinch. And it was so very excited. And that's, I think that kind of excitement of being able to see something that you haven't seen before. Um, just that, uh, that sort of, I think, is one of the more memorable things for me. Yeah. The habitats within these nature preserves are protected forever, and this becomes more important every year as bird numbers continue to decline. A 2019 study in the journal Science concluded that since the year 1970, we've lost one out of every four birds. For some species like the eastern meadowlark, we've lost three out of every four birds. That's three billion birds total. Clearly, our habitat conservation work is needed now more than ever. But did you know that one of the seven recommended ways to help save these birds is to go watch birds? By watching birds and using the citizen science program eBird, you can turn your sightings into real data that assists the global community in bird conservation efforts. Birds. Um. It really just kind of feels like a treasure hunt. Um, I kind of compare it, if anyone knows about Pokemon, adding Pokemon to your Pokedex, it's like adding birds to your life list. It's, it's like a way to collect things that is very natural and helps you get out and enjoy um, what nature gives you. Awesome. eBird is an easy to use citizen science program and app that was developed by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Birders of all abilities from all over the world submit their observations to the app from wilderness areas, nature preserves, city parks, and backyards. 
The data that's collected reveals details about bird locations and movements and increases our understanding of population growth and decline. You don't have to be an expert birder to use eBird, but your observations are valuable and will contribute to science and bird conservation in real time. eBird can be used anywhere, but some of the richest information comes from publicly accessible natural areas where observations from many bird watchers throughout the year are all compiled into one site or hotspot. This information not only goes to Cornell scientists, but it's accessible to anyone, including conservation groups and preserve managers like Southwest Michigan Land Conservancy. Southwest Michigan Land Conservancy has 15 of these hotspots, and by visiting these nature preserves and recording your bird observations on the eBird app, you can help give us a greater understanding of the birds that are on the preserves. From spring and fall migratory stopovers, to summer breeding habitat, to wintering sites, Year-round eBird checklists from bird watchers help track it all and help us take care of these birds together. It's just, I don't know, it's just neat to kind of see their free will and, uh, and the variety and, and where they all like to be. Mm -hmm.